done now. So now we just started the PCR machine and we have moved to the post PCR lab. And something that is very important when we move into the post PCR lab is that we put on new gloves, which I already have done, and also put on a new lab coat that is designated to this area. Because it's extremely important when we're talking about contamination risk that nothing from the post PCR lab moves into the pre PCR labs and so on, because they need to be separated. So the thing we are going to do here is uh, run a gel. And the reason why we run a gel is actually to check the PCR products. Because the gel consists of uh, algae sugar called agarose and some water. And this sugar makes this gel very porous. So the DNA uh, bits can move through the gel. And we also apply a current, and since DNA is polar, it will be dragged through the gel by the current. And based on the different length, it will go either further or less far into the gel. And we also add some chemicals that uh, is also illuminated by UV light. So we can actually see the bands. So it does this just to, um, both to control the size of the fragments we want, but also if they are fragments. Uh, so that's why the gel is a very important checking point after the PCR step, both the first one and also the second one. So now I will show you the reagents and tools we need to use to make a proper gel. Okay. So now I will go through all the required gear you need to make the gel and also make a gel for you as well. So first thing I need is a graduated cylinder to measure the amount of tape buffer we need. Uh, we need a plastic spoon, a small measuring tray. We need a glass flasks that's uh, capable of at least taking a hundred milliliter of tar buffer and a small glass cap as well. Uh, we also need the actual agarose uh, powder which is here. We need a microwave oven. We need some heat resistant gloves. So this is to just make the gel. After we have made the gel, we also need uh, a way to form the gel. So we need a mold. So we use this mold here that is adjustable with the lever right here. And we use this tray in the mold with the teeth here and the teeth they are what kind of makes the wells that we put in the material we want to run through our gel. So this is my um, only my preference is that I set up the mold first. And a very neat thing is that we have used green tape here in the gel uh, and we align it together. And this makes it way easier when we are pipetting in the samples because then it's way more visible. So try to align the row of teeth with the green tapered line. So then we just take the mold and we secure it so it's tight because this needs to be uh, able to hold uh, the solution. Sometimes it's a little bit finicky, but we will make it work. There we go. Now it's very tight, it's fastened there. Okay, so then it's making the gel. So first I go to the scale here, turn it on. Open the lid, put on the measuring tray and push down the zero button. Okay, so now we are ready for adding the agarose powder. And here it's uh, some things you need to take into account. It's like the concentration of agarose powder actually gives some of the capabilities of the gel. But for most circumstances that are 
important here. A 1% agarose gel is actually, at least in my experience, more than, uh, more than good enough. And that means if we have 100 milliliters of Thai buffer, we need one gram of agarose powder and mix them together. So 100 milliliters of Thai and one gram of uh, the agarose powder. And then we can take the powder and then we just use the spoon and add it to the measuring tray. So this was 0 0.40 gram. Now we're on 0 0.95. This can be, it doesn't need to be exactly one, but close to it. There we have actually exactly one gram. Close it, take it out of the way. And then we take the measuring tray, pour it in the middle of uh, the flask. Yes. There. Shut down the weight. <laughs> and then we open the tire buffer solution and try to support it and gently pour into the cylinder. Okay, there we go. And then to get the most accurate results, the meniscus is basically the bulging of the liquid should be at the measuring line. But if you are one or two milliliters off, it doesn't matter that much when it comes to the gel making. Then I pour it in and I place the cylinder in the sink, so I remember to wash it. Gently shake it, just to kind of spread the powder around in the solution. I put on the cap, and then I move this one here, so it's a little bit easier to see. And then I go to the microwave. Open the microwave, put the flask in and push jet start. And I start with one minute. Uh, and this also depends a little bit uh, upon how much gel you want. Sometimes you only want 50 milliliters, sometimes you want uh, 120, so it will uh, heat up slower and faster based on the amount. So what we want here is to boil the solution so that the particles uh, of these agarose actually dissolve. And to get it completely dissolved, we probably need to run it a couple of times. The first time takes the longest amount, because then you need to heat it up. The other two times, for example, is way shorter. And yes, then it started boiling and you can clearly see the bubbles. And you can also hear a shaking sound, a sound. Then I take it out. I gently shake it. And when I see down in the flask here, I see that it's still like uh, particles of the agaros that is not completely dissolved, which means that I need to run it once more. Now it boiled again, and the solution is getting way clearer. But when I look through kind of the uh, flask, I see still small particles. So it needs actually one more time to be completely dissolved. Okay, now it at least uh, looks way more clearer than at the start. So it 
looks very old agarose has completely dissolved. The next thing we need to do is that we need to add a component that binds to the DNA and also react to the UV light. And this is a solution we call gel red, uh, which I have here in this box here. And if I take away the heat resistant glove, you see that it's packed in these black um, bags. And the reason for that is that it's very light sensitive. So that is something to keep in mind when you're working with this. It also binds to DNA. So be very careful wearing gloves when you're working with this. Uh, the last thing that is very important to mention is that uh, the compounds in this reagent will be broken down if the solution is above 60 degrees. So we actually need to cool it down before we can add the gel red. Water. So then I remove the cap. I turn on cold water and I gently shake it. Uh, while the water is running on the side. And this takes a little bit of time because you don't want it too cool here because then it starts to solidify in the bottle. So it needs to be around, yeah, uh, 40, 50, 60 degrees around that. And the way you kind of know this is that when you turn off the water and you place your hand, and you can hold it without it being too painful, then you know it's ready. Now it was a little bit too warm still, so I could not hold my hand there for a prolonged amount of time. So I need to cool it a little bit more. Yeah, that part. Okay, now it seems ready. So then I place it here, put back the glove, get my gel red, a pipette and pipette tips. And here we use approximately three to four, five microliters of gel red for a hundred milliliter gel. So then we open the box, take a bag of gel red. And here, this is already packed in aluminum foil to actually protect it against light. Uh, it's very smart to kind of shake down uh, some of the uh, chemicals down from the lid. Otherwise you will get some residue hanging on the tip and it will be quite messy, quite fast. Then I screw it open, uh, check that I take the correct amount. And here I choose four microliters. Place it all the way down and suck it very slowly up. And here I have some gel red in the tip, take it down in the solution, pipette it up and down a couple of times. Turn on the cap and put it back into the bag. Close the lid here as well. And gently shake this solution. So you see that the coloration or the red uh, droplet actually dissolve in the entire solution. And then we are actually ready for pouring the gel. And then you just pour it quite slow and steadily, uh, the entire thing. And then sometimes you can get droplets uh, inside here and that can interfere. So if you need to uh, get those away, you just take a, a pipette tip and move the droplets to one side and take them up. 
right now I didn't have any droplets, but that's how you do it. You just use the pipette tip. And then it just needs to cool down for around 20 minutes, maybe half an hour before we can actually use the gel.